Hi, this is Miss Bennett again. We're going to talk about kinetics now. And what is kinetics? Kinetics tells us how quickly a reaction takes place. Some reactions occur very quickly like fireworks. Some reactions occur very slowly like for instance rusting metal. And all chemical kinetics is is the study of how quickly reaction takes place or reaction rates. Now in order for a reaction to take place we do have to discuss the collision theory. In order for a reaction to take place three things have to occur. The reactants have to bump into each other. They have to collide. They have to collide with the correct amount of energy known as the activation energy and those molecules have to hit at the correct orientation or geometry so that they hit at the right place for the reaction to take place. So in order for a reaction to take place, all three of these things have to occur. So when we're talking about the incorrect geometry or the correct geometry or the correct orientation, for instance, we've got the incorrect geometry in A, where you've got one molecule bumping into another, they're bumping in into end. This did not cause a reaction to occur, so if a reaction does not occur, they basically bump into each other and move on their way. Nothing happens, they break apart, we do not have a chemical reaction. Also, if they do not hit with the correct amount of energy, they will just bounce off of each other as well. But if they hit with the correct amount of energy and the correct amount or orientation to each other, the chemical reaction will take place and we will get brand new products. Okay, some factors that affect the rate of reaction and the collisions that will, take in, that will take place. The very first thing is the concentration. How concentrated are the reactants? If you increase the concentration of the reactants, you increase the collision frequency, which then will result in a faster rate. So increasing reactants, equals increased collisions, which will hopefully lead to an increased rate of reaction. If you've got more particles in the same space, they're more likely to bump into each other. The second thing is pressure. If you increase the pressure of a gas, okay, if you increase the pressure, you're reducing its volume, What's going to happen is you're, if you're causing the space to be smaller, the particles are more likely to run into each other and collide. The more collisions, the faster the rate. Temperature is another thing that will also affect the collisions. If you raise the temperature, if you remember heat them up, speed them up, the molecules will move faster Moving faster, they're more likely to run into each other, cause more collisions. Those collisions then will lead to a higher rate. Surface area is the fourth thing that will affect a collision and the reaction rate. If you increase the amount of surface area or the area of the element or particle that is exposed, you will also increase the reaction rate. So for instance, if I have just a piece of sidewalk chalk versus if I crush it up in a mortar and pestle, I have way more surface area exposed if I have it crushed up. There will be way, the, fat, the reaction will be much faster. Now one thing to know is activation energy. This is a term that you talked about in biology and it is the minimum energy required to get a reaction started. So if we're looking at these three scenarios down here at the bottom, you start with reactants, you have enough energy, the react, 
activation energy to get to the products. This hump here is the, activation, the amount of activation energy. Reactants to get to the products, activation energy. Add enough energy, activation energy, to get the reaction to go to the products. Now, depending on how much energy is needed and the amount of energy where the reactants start and the, and the products end, will give us our delta H. If I always draw a line from where the reactants start to the products, gives us a positive delta H, which means this would be endo thermic. If I draw from reactants to the, to the products and it is pointing down, this gives me a negative delta H, which means it is exothermic. So if I'm looking at this one, Z, is that going to be endo or exo? It's going to be exothermic. This reaction here requires a lot more energy than this reaction here. Less activation energy, more activation energy. So you've got to have the correct amount of energy, the correct orientation, and the collisions to occur in order for a reaction to take place. Another thing that can affect the rate is a catalyst, and all a catalyst is is just a substance that you add to the reaction that speeds the reaction up, and it works by lowering the activation energy. It does not affect the reaction in any way except for to lower the activation energy. It is not written in the reactants or the products. It is just there to increase the reaction rate. So for instance, if we're looking at a catalyzed reaction versus an uncatalyzed reaction, if we're looking at this very first reaction where we have a decomposition reaction, the decomposition of dinitrogen monoxide decomposes into nitrogen and oxygen. If we do not add a catalyst to it, look how much energy is required. We add a catalyst. Notice the catalyst is not written in the reaction. It's platinum. Not written in the reaction, but it does cause the activation energy to be lowered. If we take another decomposition reaction, ammonia breaks down into nitrogen and hydrogen. Without a catalyst being added, it takes 335 kilojoules of energy. Whereas if we add a catalyst, tungsten to this reaction, notice once again it's not written in the reaction, it's just there to lower the activation energy. And if you look at the graph, if you do not, this is if you do not have a catalyst versus if you do have a catalyst. Lowers the activation energy and that's the goal of the catalyst. In this reaction, just for review, notice drawing that arrow, the arrow points down, therefore delta H is negative, which means it is an exo thermic reaction. In bio, a type of catalyst you guys talked about were enzymes. Enzymes were an example of a protein, one of our major macromolecule groups whose monomer is the amino acid. The, en the catalyst and enzymes that you have in your body allow your body to react as quickly as it does if you did not have enzymes in your body making your reactions go faster, there's no way your body could keep up. Okay, so just to review, these are some for, for some previous SOL tests. Let's go over this. One of the main assumptions of the kinetic molecular theory of gases is that the particle of an ideal gas are in constant motion. They must be in motion. Each beaker shown above has 2.2 grams of iron and one liter of three molar. What is that? 
sulfuric acid at standard temperature and pressure. Which reaction will go first and why? It will be beaker B because you have a greater surface area with all of those little particles versus this large piece of metal. Okay, that ends our kinetics. I would like to review just one last time before we completely get out of kinetics. If I take a look at this reaction here, sodium hydroxide plus water gives me sodium ion plus the hydroxide ion, and the delta H is negative. If the delta H is negative, is it going to be written as a reactant or a product? Delta H being negative tells me it is exothermic. If it is exothermic, it's being given off which means it should be part of the product. So in other words, instead of writing this part, I could put plus 1,000 joules. What is the enthalpy for this reaction? It's negative 1,000 joules. Would this reaction feel hot or cold? If it's exothermic, it's going to feel hot. And we've already answered this question. It is exothermic. So let's try another one. We've got ammonium nitrate plus water and 500 joules of energy is going to give us ammonium hydroxide and nitric acid. So here's my energy, the joules. Is heat a reactant or a product? It is on the left side of the reaction, therefore it is a reactant. What is the delta H for this reaction? Delta H, since it is written on the reactant side, is a positive 500 joules. Would this reaction feel hot or cold if it is endothermic because it's written on the reactant side because it is also positive is going to feel cold. And one last one. One that you guys I know covered in biology, this is cellular respiration. Notice the 180 joules is over on the reactant side, or excuse me, the product side. Therefore, this delta H is going to be negative 180 joules. Being on the product side, it is going to be exothermic. If it is exothermic, it feels hot. It is negative, and it's part of the products.